fire shell. I've been building this tool over the last couple of weeks um, from my past experience with uh, using Grunt, SAS uh, and HTML5. Um, I've been putting it together so that it's very, very easy for anybody to use the tool, uh, especially when people aren't familiar with the command line. So Fireshell is, is all set up to get anyone going uh, with Grunt, SAS and HTML5 uh, and I'll just show you what it does uh, in a second. So if you want to head to the GitHub URL um, on github.com slash totemoto slash Fireshell, you'll also be able to access the uh, the website which is getfireshell.com uh, so if we just head to download zip here I'll get a, a fresh download uh, Fireshell Master and I'll just show you how easy it is to get set up with all the stuff that Grunt, Grunt is providing so here's my folder okay so let me talk you through the Fireshell folder structure really quickly um, source directory is where we're going to have all of our SAS files and JavaScript files um, and then the app is, is technically our build folder so uh, the CSS will go in here you'll have your, your style.min.css in here and then the scripts.min.css in here also comes with uh, jQuery 1.10.2 and modernizer 2.6.2 um, index.html so this is just a HTML5 uh, boilerplate inspired uh, framework for, for just a, a basic HTML include uh, that I've created with a lot of a lot of useful stuff there's, n there's no sort of uh, learning curve with this, it's very very bare bones um, but it's exactly what you need to get started with with all the products so the, the most interesting f files are the grunt file and the, the source directory so let's just look in here. Got my SAS directory, got a few mixins. I've included a, a couple of just a helpers uh, by default. Um, obviously, if you want to use things like Compass, you won't need this. But for beginners using SAS, um, there's a couple of cool mixins where you can just automatically start using them. Uh, modules, I've uh, been building a lot of applications over the last couple of months. Uh, and I found this setup to be absolutely brilliant for building websites and applications so it's, it's a hybrid setup so let me just talk you through this really really quickly it includes normalize which is uh, basically a, a well thought out CSS reset print uh, that's taken from the HTML5 boilerplate uh, which when you print your website it will then convert all the colors to black and white and stuff um, display all hyperlinks typography uh, this is where all your font face will be, SAS variables, miscellaneous, things like text selection, lists, inputs, defaults, so you can have body includes, uh, border box, clear fix, buttons, breakpoints for things like um, media queries, uh, and then app.sas, uh, this is where everything else would go, so all the tailored, all the tailored CSS that isn't object oriented. Then partials, you've got things like header, footer, uh, main, nav and sidebar so more think about your your application as more of an architecture so you've got a blueprint of your your application or your website start to make the the application with these files and then you can overlay the modules inside them vendor for any vendor specific things such as font awesome uh, and you can obviously rename these to suit uh, the style.sas uh, then imports I'll just open Sublime Text here so you can see how this works. So I've imported these in a specific order. So you've got Vendor uh, and Position. These are mix-ins. They won't actually uh, be in the, the final source code. They're just there for SAS to render them. Uh, and then everything else. It shouldn't really matter what, what order you, you import these in. Um, but it's good to have your variables and your clear fixes and all your de defaults uh, and, and uh, resets at the top. Uh, and then you can then create sort of the, the OO stuff here, uh, your objects, and then your, your application or website, um, and then breakpoints and print as a, as a final thing, uh, and then all the partials and any external things. Okay, so this this sounds cool and all, um, and then there's just your, your scripts.js um, with a real quick default. Um, I'll show you this quickly because it's quite interesting. This is a fairly popular JavaScript pattern. Um, which jQuery window and document are passed in 
jQuery window and document and you've also got undefined uh, to prevent any errors uh, for, for outside of the, the scope uh, declarations of undefined perhaps. Uh, use strict so ECMA uh, script 5 enable script mode uh, it's, it's a lot lot better than not using it uh, and then function which is the jQuery DOM ready shorthand wrapper so how do we use uh, Fireshell in this instance you got a grunt file here uh, I fully configured it to do pretty much everything that you'll need um, apart from obviously if you want to extend these things so when you start a a, a grunt project you'll you'll need a folder called node modules now this node modules folder doesn't exist so I've created a grunt hyphen dev dot command file which as you can see in here uh, ignore the the first two lines it says if if no modules node modules doesn't exist then we're going to run the install so it doesn't it doesn't actually exist here so if I double click this you'll see my terminals popping open here uh, yes okay I'll open that uh, which uh, a dot .command file will actually execute everything for you uh, I just type my password in there so this is now downloading my dependencies uh, for grunt and you'll see node modules has majestically appeared so we'll give this a couple of seconds and you'll see how easy it is to get started with Fireshell because all of the grunt configuration will run as soon as this install is done so within 10 seconds of downloading the thing, uh, you, you can actually up and running developing a, a project from scratch. Okay, that's all done. That's running them. You can see, I'll just go back to this quickly so you can actually see. So I've set up running SAS, uh, running JS hint, so you can actually uh, JavaScript hint uh, your JS files. Uh, concat dev, so there's a, there's a dev branch in there which, um, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, connect live reload, so that will as it says, start connect web server on localhost 9000 and then open which as you saw we have a brand new web page open and then watch, watch is an interesting one so uh, let me just show you something really quickly if I do alert hello welcome to Fireshell we'll hit that just wait for that to refresh itself okay uh, hello, welcome to Fireshell. Something beeped at me then. Okay, alert is not defined. That's a JS hint picking up already. You you shouldn't really use alert, so I think JS hints uh, block this one by default. But I'll show you how to uh, how to turn off those as well. So you see that's just refresh itself. Console is obviously uh, more supported in JS hint. Um, if you look, if you enable your hidden files to be visible as well, you've got JS hint here. If I double click this one. Uh, yes, I'll open that. Uh, okay, I need to open it in Sublime Text. So this is where you can declare global variables. jQuery and Modernizer uh, I've shipped as a default. But if you're going to be using alerts, you want to just do alert true. Uh, make sure you include this comma because it will break otherwise. And that's pretty much it with that. Uh, the other cool thing about Fireshell is uh, all the SAS stuff is very, very, uh, I won't say obvious, but it's, it's well explained uh, in the documentation. So uh, let me just go to my modules and defaults. Let's just open the defaults quickly. So my body background is white at the minute. If I change that to bright orange, because I like bright orange for demos, um, and then just see that change. So you can start to see how Fireshell has absolutely everything that you need uh, for a, a very, very solid foundation base layer to start building either a website or an application. Uh, and for those interested, I will just really, really quickly talk you through the, the grunt file. Uh, you'll also notice there's a grunt build command. So let me just show you the file quickly. So these, these style.min have been generated. Um, as you can see, they're not actually minified now. And JS styles.min isn't minified, which is why I've included a grunt build command, which is a task inside the grunt file here. So when I click that uh, grunt build, yep, yeah, that's then done that. Okay, you can see that's... Uh, 
There you go. So Grunt Build doesn't start any web servers. It doesn't watch for live changes. It just runs SAS dist, which is a distribution. Uh, and then SAS file, uh, JS hint on the files, uh, as usual, just to check for all the files again. And it Uglify uh, on my distribution again. Uglify is probably the best JavaScript minifier that I know. Um, and it comes, it comes pre-loaded inside Fireshell. Uh, as you can see, everything here is been compressed. You still got the dynamic banner added here, uh, and then if I go into the CSS again, this is all minified stuff. So there's no bringing up websites, pasting your code in, pressing minify. It's very, very seamless, and it's all done for you. So let me just close that, uh, and then of course I've still got this one uh, open again. So if I were to click save, uh, that'll actually update all these files again, and you see that those just changed to the development version. So it's really really cool to have a development version that you can debug line by line and then you just run grunt build and it will just compress absolutely everything for you. Dump it on the server and you're good to go. Um, obviously build processes vary uh, from team and person. Uh, Fireshell has been um, built with teams in mind. Um, at my workplace we're, we use this, this kind of setup So and grunt is very very good because you don't have an individual computer setup. You actually Grunt manages all the dependencies for you. Um, okay, so for for those interested on the Grunt file, um, I've got a couple of variables set up at the top, so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves lower down. So this is where my CSS will be held, and the JS will be held. This is actually the the stuff that you want in development, not production. So as you scroll down, you see the dynamic banner here. And as I'm talking about that, I'll show you, you'll see it says package.name. So package.json actually includes all of these, these attribute uh, properties here. Uh, so you've got Fireshell. So you'll just want to tailor these to your project. Uh, so if you're building Modernizer, let's say, you would do that. And then that would dynamically change this, this top bit to Modernizer uh, on output. Uh, I've included all the URLs. So you can you can learn about Grunt and each of the tasks used. Uh, if you're going to be using a port 9000, let's say for something else, you could you could change it to 8000 or 8080 or whatever best suits you. Uh, here's the the folder to mount the app folder, which which will be the localhost 9000, uh, and everything is injected into there. JS hint, that's all set up. The concat, which is concatenate files. So in the dev channel. Uh, we're going to be looking into our project.app, which, as I said above, project.app is just the app folder, project.source will be the source folder, um, and then you've got your project.js. So this is the this is the input, and this is the output. So it's, it's probably best to just keep them as scripts.min and styles.min uh, for, for CSS. Um, this is because you just want to include one JS and one CSS file. Uh, in your whole suite. Um, this is really really good when it comes to web performance uh, and it also en encourages a very very tidy DOM. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having out of control JavaScript and CSS files everywhere whereas this is, I like to call it out of the view. So your view uh, in application development is such as your, your HTML. So out of the view you'll, you'll manage everything in the back end. Uh, well we call it the back end but it's, it's really your, your computer. Um, uh, you can specify watch targets so here I've just said project.app uh, all my files you can fully customize these very very simple uh, and then here's my grunt task so default is just uh, if you just want to run grunt like that on the command line that's a default and then grunt build is the build and you can obviously customize these to suit if you don't want to let's say JS hint your code uh, which you should, then you can, but you can get rid of that if you really wanted. Uh, okay, so that is how to get started with Fireshell in just a couple of seconds. Um, I hope you can see the the power of it, and I hope you use it well.